Hello and welcome back, I'm Zach and as you would have seen in this video Ellis and myself are travelling to the land of fire and ice. We are going to Iceland. We are going there for three days however to keep it connected with the theme of the channel we are staying in a Viking themed hotel. I mean, look how cool that place looks. We are flying from Luton with a company called Wiz Air, who have a free handheld baggage uh, option with a baggage sizes is 20 centimeters by 30 centimeters by 40 centimeters. So before we get into it, I wanted to show you my bag and what I'm packing. Behave. All right guys, this is the Cabin Max Memphis. I got it on Amazon for 42 pounds. It ranges from about 42 to 50 pounds. Ellis is getting the Cabin Max Manhattan, which uh, comes in at around 40 pounds on Amazon. And we're gonna do a little bit of a test to see which comes in better. Both are about the same size, so this one just has extra little bits, like compartments and whatever. So we're gonna find out which actually comes in better at the end of the video. Okay, so as I said, we're not going for very long. We're only really going for like three days. So there isn't a huge amount that you need to pack anyway. Two t-shirts, bearing in mind I'll be wearing one on the plane and on the way back home. An undershirt thermal top, pair of swimming shorts and my underwear rolled up in there. Cram my socks there. And then this part comes down, folds over all of that. Next I'll be putting in my tripod. Obviously this isn't necessary for everyone. It's just I would like to bring you a bit of content when I get there. So that's going in now. And then on top of that, I've got myself a pair of winter snow trousers, which will just sit on the top, wrapping around, keeping everything nice and protected and snug. Like so. In these little netted bits, I'm going to be putting all my electric equipment. So I've got my GoPro. I've got uh, a little mini tripod. The camera that I'm using now will also go in here. Spare camera batteries. Charging cables. In this pocket, I'm going to be putting all my bathroom stuff, so toothbrush, medication, shower gels, things like that. Towels, you might be thinking I haven't packed any towels. I'll be using towels from the hotel. I'm also putting in here a multi-use um, universal plug for traveling. In the front of the bag, we've got this nice little compartment here, which opens up and you have extra storage here. And this part is where I'm going to be putting my harder stuff, like my um, battery packs. So they just go in there like that, which will zip up nicely. I'm also putting in an extra long charging cable here for just ease, easy access. So if I need to charge my phone up or something, I can grab my battery pack and a charger and just charge it on the go. On the back of the bag, you've got this part here, which is usually for laptops and tablets. I'm personally just gonna be using this for all my important documents. Just put that in there, and then it's safe. And the way. Just a point to add 
on the back piece there's another pit here we can put money or anything like that you want to put there what I'm thinking about doing for here is if I do need to charge on the go I'll put my battery pack in there zip it up and have my cable running around right guys the time has finally come the bags are packed car is full of fuel all we got to do now is pick up Ellis and then go to Luton jobs are good god forsaken child lock yeah. <laughs> They were so advanced. Alright guys, well we're here in Iceland, we're already in our hotel, as you would have seen we uh, caught our flight this morning at about 7 o'clock this morning and we landed here in Iceland at 20 past 10. Uh, the weather's been a bit grim, it's snowy, it's cloudy, it's wet um, and it's about 1 to 2 degrees, but it's all good. We're ready for it, wrapped up, and we're, we're enjoying yourself. We're having fun. Just to give you guys a recap on what we've done today, because I haven't really done much of vlogging. I've just been doing recording. Is after we landed, we had a bit of a wander around the airport, uh, had a bit of food, and we've just been going to place to place on buses, learning the transport thing. Um, 
we stopped off at, I'm not even going to pronounce the name, but I'll put it, put it here, um, where there was like a Viking history museum um, about Iceland. It was really interesting, really cool. If you guys are here, I'd highly, highly recommend you go in. They had like this long boat um, in there as well, which was really cool. Had some, uh, had some fun messing around on that. They also had this old Viking sort of chess game. Uh, we had a game of that, and that was really cool. Really enjoyed playing that. And then just after that, we just got the bus to where we're staying, uh, and we booked in, and this is where we are now. We're all settled. Ellis is in the shower, um, warming up really, because it's it is cold. <laughs> Dry fish. Literally just dry had it. It's not even chewy. It smells like fish. Or like blanche paste. Can you smell it? Can you smell it? It's crab. Shark. Fermented. Really chewy. It doesn't it taste that bad, it's the aftertaste. I thought it was a block of cheese. Oh. Skull. Tequila, that's the word I was looking for. It smells like tequila. Oh my god. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> oh my god. Ah. No, that like softened up. Oh. God. <laughs> Thank you. And the rest are so. Thank you. Oh. No good shot. Fish shoot. Seafood soup. Good soup. We finished before we even started. We might have time to actually just go straight to the front doctor. Hmm. Definitely should have found a beer place.
So the plan for today, when we when I get back to the hotel, it's breakfast. Obviously I left Ellis in bed, so he's sound asleep. One thing I've noticed on my uh, little walk, wander around this morning is um, I've gone past like a good few houses. I've noticed no one seems to have curtains. Like, is that a thing in Iceland? Do you just not bother with curtains or something? If you're local to Iceland, then you have an answer. Because I'm, I'm slightly amazed by the amount of people that don't seem to have curtains drawn at this time in the morning. The first place we visited was the Saga Museum, which lets you walk the path of Vikings and recreates the key moments in Iceland's early history. We were guided along with about a half an hour for you guide. If you're in the area, I'd highly recommend you visit this place as it was quite interesting and also fun. On our way into the city centre, we stopped off into the Icelandic Fallis Museum because, well, funny. There's also a huge whiteboard for people to uh, draw on, so I left my tag. After seeing all those cocks, we were clearly hungry as we went into Loki's Cafe, which is one of the most popular cafes in Reykjavik for its traditional Icelandic foods. Here Ellis is trying fermented shark and a shot of Brennivin.
in my pants. <laughs> After visiting Hasgrimskia and the Rainbow Road, we stopped off for a nice cold drink at the ice bar. Had quite a bit of fun here, uh, but it was a very gimmicky and we didn't stay for long. For something a bit more thrilling, we stopped off at Bastard, which is a cafe in Reykjavik, where I can say I had the best burger of my life. Again, if you are in the area, go check it out. It was called The Fat Bastard. Right guys, good morning, welcome back. It's day three for us now. You're probably thinking there's a big chunk missing out of this video. You'd be right, we were supposed to do the Northern Lights tour last night, but it was canceled last minute. So, all we did last night then, after we were in Reykjavik, was we came back to the hotel, got in that hot tub, and just chilled out for the night. Tonight, today, we are planning on doing the Golden Circle Tour with the Secret Lagoon. So fingers crossed this will go to plan today. I forgot to mention at this point my boots had wrecked my feet. The first stop on our Golden Circle tour 
was Thingfeather's National Park, which literally means Assembly Plains, as it is the location of Europe's first parliamentary assembly, which was established in 930. Here laws were recited, people made speeches and presented ideas and proposals. Along with this historical place, the land sits upon the European and North American tectonic plates, which is the cause for the gorges and cracks in the landscape.
The last stop on our tour was the Secret Lagoon, the oldest swimming pool in Iceland, made in 1891. The water is supplied by the little geysers around the area as well as hot springs. The pool water flows continuously and stays at a constant temperature of 38 to 40 degrees Celsius all year round. And it is incredibly majestic. Oh, did he think it was over? Oh, no, 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 no. See, that would be a nice way to finish this video. I agree. But unfortunately, it didn't go quite that simple. See, we planned to get the early bus back 
to the airport in time for our plane. But that would be far, 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 far too simple for one of my videos. Something had to go wrong. Right guys, that just about concludes my little trip to Iceland after the hell of a day we had yesterday with the bus breaking down in the morning needing to get another bus, not sure whether we were going to make it to the airport only to find our flight was delayed by a few hours All in all, we had a pretty good journey uh, apart from the boots I wore I, I'm they're just going straight in the bin because they have given me hell on my feet um, It was like walking in Foot saunas because the moisture just kept getting trapped and They've just blistered my feet have just blistered to hell I'm not gonna show you because no one wants to see that and if you do You're weird and you'll have to pay me for it As I said at the beginning of the video. I wanted to do a bit of a um like a review of my bag compared to Ellis's bag and to be honest there really wasn't much in it um, the bags were both made by the same company Cabin Max or something like that so they both had the same sort of standard to them the only difference really was mine being a bit more in price had a little extra quick access parts like the part on the front things like this did come in handy when needing stuff like charging cables or battery packs things like that the fact it had this little front uh, pocket where you can get things for quick access however it wasn't really necessary the both performed quite well, they both obviously are the same size and both literage. So the amount of stuff that we could pack was more or less about the same and what we found out on the first day when we had all the horrible sleet and rain was the bags aren't really that waterproof. Yeah, on the first day after we had our little walk around when we got back to the hotel, well, when we first got to the hotel and we unpacked, we found quite a few of our things were wet. But it wasn't much of a problem. It was able to dry out over due time. Not a problem at all. Just that was one of the smallest defects about the bag is they're not really that waterproof or not built for harsh weather like we had on that first day. If I'm going to be completely honest, the bag that Ellis had is probably a little bit more practical. Uh, the straps can get tucked inside the bag so it's more of like a hand luggage 
whereas mine, you can't do that. And I found, I don't know if it's just because I'm a bit of a wide boy, the straps were quite tight and digging in under my arms and chest. So the bag was a little bit uncomfortable at times, but it served its purpose. Okay, so the tours. I just want to talk about the um, the tour a little bit that we did, the uh, Golden Circle tour. It was a very good tour. Um, I did enjoy it. Um, obviously everything was quite spread out, so we spent quite a bit of time on the road. However, once you get to the first destination, which was the uh, National Park, everything from there on was, wasn't too far away. It was about maybe half an hour at the most to get to the next point. It was a very interesting tour. I do see why it is one of the most popular tours. The National Park was stunning. It was gorgeous. Um, the whole thing was just beautiful. The only comment really I would say about it was we didn't have a lot of time in each place. When we got to the National Park we only had 45 minutes I think it was to have a look around so by the time you actually uh, go to the toilet or something like that and then you walk around it you pretty much got to go straight back to the bus and you don't really have time to take it in and I found this with a lot of the places we went to. So then the National Park, we were there for 45 minutes. The Geysers, we were there for 65 minutes, but this was right at lunchtime now. This was, I think, around about one o'clock. Everyone was hungry, because no one, we didn't bring snacks or anything like that. We were all hungry, so everyone went straight to the cafe. It was rammed. By the time you ordered food and ate it, you'd already, already wasted about half an hour, 40 minutes of your time. So I think at the Geysia, we only had around 15 to 20 minutes to actually look around. And with those things, you need to be there a lot longer because they're unpredictable, aren't they? They, they just, pff, when they want to. So that felt a bit rushed as well. We didn't get a lot of time there. Um, Golfos, the waterfall, we were there just under an hour. I think we were about 50 minutes, 55 minutes we were there. That one I thought we were there for enough time. That was a very short walk down to the waterfall and once you've had a few pictures and taken it in, that's okay. I used full the full time there. I think I got back to the bus just in time, but obviously I was making content for you guys and I was having time to observe it myself and make memories for myself. So that was a perfect amount of time on that one. At the Secret Lagoon, which was the add-on bit of it, you can either do the Blue Lagoon, which is the more touristy one, or the Secret Lagoon, which was, as you've seen, a lot quieter. We were there about two hours. I think that was a good amount of time probably could have done an hour and a half you don't need to be there that long but that's just my own personal view but yeah it that day was a lot of time spent on the buses and I personally have this thing about public transport where it makes me a bit giddy and that was a bit of a a bit of a bummer on the day especially knowing that the only way back and forth to throughout where we were going from Reykjavik to the Viking village, we had to take buses pretty much the whole entire day. Um, yeah, I'm not a big I'm not a big fan of public transport, especially buses. So I would highly recommend if you're the same, get a car or hire a car because everything in Iceland, apart from in Reykjavik, is quite spread out. If you if we hire a car from the Viking village to Reykjavik, it's about 10, 15 minute drive. However, on the bus it took more because we have to stop more. And the same with the Northern Lights. So 
unfortunately, as I said, our Northern Lights tour was cancelled. Now, a lot of people on these Facebook pages and stuff like that who I was speaking to were saying, go somewhere dark and you do have a chance of seeing it, even if the tours are cancelled. But that would have mean walking for quite some time and as I've just said, my feet were in no condition to walk miles and miles. Not only that, we'd packed the days so tightly that we didn't really have any time at night to go just for a wander, just for a chance. So that would be for me another reason why I would want to hire a car is that we could just drive 20 minutes, half an hour out into the middle of nowhere and try and have a look for ourselves rather than walking for an hour. So yeah, in a nutshell, the time, you need more time than the three days we were there especially if you're not staying in Reykjavik. If you stayed in Reykjavik, you could probably do a fair amount of time there in three days if you're not going on tours and things like that. I was talking to Ellis and we sort of said, yeah, we do want to go again, but we would end up going for at least a week or two weeks and we would hire a car so we're not relying on public transport. We can come and go as and when we want to. We can go at our own convenience, stop at our own convenience. If tours and things like that were cancelled, then we have the option to drive out to places and kill time there. So yeah, I have fully enjoyed going. <laughs> I know this last segment sounds like I'm moaning, but I have enjoyed it. These are just the little pointers that I've picked up on. Obviously, I'm just giving you as much original sort of thought and content as I can. On the whole, if you have the opportunity to go, go. It is incredible. The people are fantastic. They're so nice. Uh, the first few days, we couldn't really figure out how the buses work. And to be honest, some of the bus drivers were just like, just get on. It's fine. They were quite sound. The people there, the hospitality, they're lovely, you can't fault them. The service, we were astonished how quickly the service was. I think we went somewhere, we sat down within a couple minutes, they had asked us for our drinks and food and we are like, okay, that's quick. And the food had come not long after that. It was very, very sharp and very precise. The tour lady was lovely, she was great. Um, very full of knowledge, always trying to be as helpful as possible. So yeah, that was basically my little trip to Iceland. If you guys can think of anywhere that I need to go or that you think I would like to go or that you want me to try and do a little bit of a venture vlog like this with, comment it down below and I'll go check it out and see what we can do for the future. If you've enjoyed, give us a like and subscribe and until next time my friends, cheers.